and welcome back to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. that I made. Remember that amplifier prototype I made a couple of weeks ago? Well now I've put it into a little piece of strip board. Let's just get a close-up of that. You can see the three transistors. We've got the NPN and PNP output transistors and there's the driver transistor and all the other parts that needed. There's my messy soldering. So I made that and I made another one a stereo and I've also made a power supply which is this here and I've got this project box to put it in and this was the original project box I was going to use for my FM radio transmitter but when I ordered it I found it was bigger than I thought it would be so I've had that kicking around for some time so I'm going to use that for this now let's just take a little closer look at the power supply I've used the old-fashioned Zener diode and transistor technique here to make a stabilized power supply. Don't know if you can see, there's the Zener diode right there. If I turn it on its side, you might be able to see it. It's a tiny little thing. And the transistor with a heat sink on it. So, I'm going to plug this in and see what kind of voltage we get out of it. Now, do not try this at home the way I'm about to connect this, because it is kind of dangerous, but I know more of what I'm doing. I'm just going to put the other one in the other hole, and we have 13 volts. It's a little bit higher than what I want, but that'll do just fine. Well, it's a little bit later on now, and I've soldered on the input and output capacitors, and put on some wires, so they're just about ready to test. And I had a bit of an accident with the soldering iron as well, which is this soldering iron. I had it warming up, and while I was getting a few other things ready, uh, I just left it unattended, and, and then I noticed this weird smell, and I couldn't really work out what it was. First I thought it was Mum's cooking downstairs, but then I found it was coming from this room, and I looked around for what could be causing the smell, and I found out that the soldering iron had moved and was merrily burning away one of my DVDs. And not in the good way either. And of course it would have to be one of my favourite ones, and this is what it did. And unfortunately you can see that... Oh, you can see my ugly face there. Fortunately, you can see it's not gone into any of the actual data, so it should still be playable. I managed to save that just in time. But anyway, now, let's test these circuits. I've got the power supply connected up. Now I'm going to turn the meters on. Yes, I have two, because I accidentally blew the... I accidentally fried this one, so it no longer measures AC anymore, but DC still measures perfectly fine, so... We're using this one to measure the voltage output at the speaker out and this one to measure the amount of current it's drawing so I can just quickly connect it up and if it, ex and if it, and if it draws an excessive amount of current we'll know something's wrong there we go it's drawing about 24 milliamps and we've got 1.6 volts at the speaker connection that one seems alright I know it should be around half of the supply voltage, but that will change when I adjust the bias resistor. Now, check the other circuit and see if that's working. Okay, I'm just about to test the other one to make sure it is safe. Don't quite know why I'm getting a small reading on the voltmeter, since it's not even connected to the power, but anyway. Okay, and this one gets slightly higher. Now I'm just going to adjust the bias resistor on this one and see what effect we get when we increase the bias voltage. Okay, current goes down and voltage goes up. So that seems pretty good. Okay, well I'm just about to test it with an audio signal now. Got it hooked up to one of those weirdo speakers that I found. And you've probably noticed that the sound quality of this video isn't as good now. That's because 
Before I was using the reel-to-reel -to, -reel to record the sound, but now I'm using that as the audio source, so I'm having to use the camera's audio this time. Anyway, I've discovered a little bit of a trouble with this, and that's the power supply that I've made doesn't seem to be, well, as stable as I thought it was. I can hear the dreaded 100 hertz hum in the speaker when I connect it up, so... I'm not exactly sure what I've done wrong, but as any person who's worked with electronics will tell you, it's an easy mistake to make, you know, I could have put the diode in the wrong way around, something could be shorting out, or that something could be open anywhere, it could be anything. But... Right, well, I've got a different power supply connected now, and I've got a meter setting up, I mean the meter set up measuring how much current it's drawing, so I'll just stop the reel-to-reel -reel playing and let's see what we get with this one. Okay, adjust the bias. Well, I think after a little bit of a jump, I think after a little bit more adjusting, this should be fine. That seems to be drawing 39 milliamps of idle current for some reason. The transistors aren't even warm. All right, okay. Well. Here I have the other circuit in the testing bay. Right, so... Start this and get this adjusted and see if it works. Okay, well, I think that shows that that one's working. I've just done another little experiment here, and if we zoom in, you might be able to see that I've shorted out one of the three diodes that connects the two transistors together, and you would not believe the difference that has made to this amplifier. You can see on the meter it's only dra drawing one milliamp, right? Now I'll start the tape going. Okay, see how much more efficient that's made this thing? You know, changing the quiescent current down from 24 milliamps, getting that down to 1 milliamp, that's... That's a pretty good improvement, I think. I'm now running it on 12 volts. Readjusted the bias again for this particular voltage. And bloody hell, it sounds loud now. When I play the tape... Damn, that is loud. I don't know how it picked up on the camera, but it's practically blasting me out of the room. Well, I've got it all put into the project box now and everything's wired up apart from the power supply because I'm still, I'm just still not happy with that power supply. I've added this capacitor here on the transistor's output and it doesn't seem to be able to provide enough current. It certainly stopped the hum, but I don't think it's but I don't think it's able to provide enough current. So I've got an external 12 volt power supply which is coming along this wire here and powering it up. So uh, anyway, let's take a little listen to it. I've got it hooked up to these two speakers and it's connected up to my Denon cassette deck and I'm using the reel to reel again to record the sound. But anyway, let's take a little listen to it. Just to prove it, this connected the power, so now, you, now when I connect the power again... Okay, that's the um, power supply that I made for it wired up, and I'm just going to plug it in. Again, do not try this at home unless you know what you're doing. There we go, that's plugged in now. It's good that there is absolutely no hum now, but let's just play the tape. Can you 
hear how sort of jumpy that sounds with the power supply that I've made. I've no idea why it's doing that. Um, the only thing I can think of is that this is just simply not providing enough current to run the amplifier. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got a hundred of, the, well not a hundred, but many of these sort of power brick things. I'm going to try and find one of those and fit that in there and see what we get. Well, I found this power brick, which is a 9 volt supply. Before, when I was operating this on a on an external supply, it was a 12 volt supply, but it does seem to work, but it's doing something really, really weird. I'm just going to put the microphone up to it. Yeah. If anybody can identify that noise and tell me why it's doing that, I would like to know. Although it's doing that, it does still work. So, it works pretty good, if only I could just find the, the source of what's causing that weird oscillation, this would be a really good amplifier. Now I've got it running off the external 12 volt power supply again, and it's not doing that weird thing when it's powered off this supply, and of course... So I don't know. I really just don't know. Sounds great when I've got the external power supply connected to it. When I try it with any other power supplies, it don't want to know. And yes, before you asked, they were both regulated supplies, so I've absolutely no idea what's, what's going on. Really, really just no idea. Anyway, until next time, goodbye.